Hey y'all, Bill Quirk with the Defensive Training Group and Big Daddy Unlimited. And I'm here today to talk to you about edged weapons, everyday carry knives, and different options and whatnot that go along with these things. First thing, I'm not an expert in this type of stuff. I don't teach these things. I have a long martial arts background and I did carry an edged weapon as a defensive tool when I was working in law enforcement and now in my retirement. But uh, it's not something that I'm highly skilled in and we're gonna talk about that and how that influences the way that I use these things. Moving on from that, the other big point that I wanna make is I'm gonna show you a bunch of different uh, options here. You need to know the legalities in your own jurisdiction as to whether or not you can carry some of these options. In certain states, you have a concealed weapons permit that may cover uh, edged weapons as well. In other states, it's a concealed handgun permit that only covers the handgun, and there may be different laws that apply to knives and whatnot. So make sure you know the legalities in your jurisdiction so that you don't get yourself into a, uh, a legal bind. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is uh, when we start carrying a edged weapon, the reality is most likely it's gonna be more of a utility tool than an actual defensive tool. No matter how we, we conceive of these things and even the design of the blade, chances are where you're gonna use this most is opening your mail, cutting open a box, doing things like that, and that's fine. Uh, it's a good reason to have a knife. Uh, these types of tasks come up all the time and having an edge weapon that you, or an edge tool that you can do this stuff with is a good thing. It could, however, also be a use of force option. And so let's talk about that. It's not gonna be like Hollywood. That's the first thing to understand. A knife fight, a real knife fight on the street is an incredibly violent, frequently completely chaotic, unchoreographed type of situation. It's close, it's a lot of stabbing, a lot of gross motor skills, and uh, it's not like what you see on TV and on the movies where it's all choreographed and they fight and all the flowery stuff. Um, even in some of the martial arts uh, where we, we do kata involving knives, those are um, more stylized and they're not really what you're gonna see in your typical knife fight. A typical knife fight, understand, if you get into a knife fight, you're probably gonna get cut. Even if you end up being victorious in the end, you're probably gonna get cut. It's just very, very hard to, uh, to engage with these things and not end up bleeding. We all have a visceral response to a blade, and I do an experiment in some of my classes when I'm talking to the class and everyone is gathered around. I'll draw my pistol, pointing it straight at the ground finger on the frame, and I'll walk around amongst the class, and everyone's like, eh, what's Bill doing? They're not really concerned about that, even though my weapon is out. And then I'll holster back up and I'll draw my knife, and I'll start walking around, the, uh, around them again. And the knife is still held into my chest, it's not pointed at anybody, I'm not waving it around, but the response from the class is noticeably different because we've all been cut. So we know what that's like. So even though we know the firearm is a deadly weapon and the knife is potentially a deadly weapon, we respond differently to the blade. We just have that visceral response. And we can use that to our advantage if we ever have to deploy one of these things. So when we're talking about using an edged weapon as a defensive tool, there are two scenarios that I kind of keep in my mind when I'm planning out how I would use it and where I'm gonna carry it and all that kind of stuff. One is more relevant to when I was working in law enforcement. The second would be relevant to my off-duty time then or more of what I do now. So the first one was if uh, I found myself where my, my long gun primarily was entangled or I couldn't get to my handgun or something along those lines because of an extreme close quarters type situation, the blade was a, uh, an option that I could go to with gross motor type of skills to create distance, create space so that I could break contact and then access my pistol or my rifle as the case may be. The second uh, scenario would be something where the, the blade is your only option. You're not carrying a firearm for whatever reason. You're out jogging and you didn't want to carry a firearm. You're in a non-permissive environment where you can't carry a firearm and the knife is the only thing that, that you have on you. And even in that case, it's still gonna be something primarily that we deploy to create space, to create distance so that we can run away, so that we can take cover behind a vehicle or something that's gonna put a barrier between us and the other person, something along those lines. So those are the two scenarios that um, kind of guided the way that I looked at these things. When we start talking about the knives themselves, we have two primary categories. You've got your folding blades, and then you've got your fixed blades. So we'll talk about a couple of these, and there are a lot that are out here. I'm gonna focus primarily on the ones that I currently use or that I used when I was working. So this is the one that I currently carry. This is an Emerson Sax, 
and uh, it's a folding knife. It's got the thumb stud, so this is my current everyday carry knife. And uh, as I said, this is really good as a utility tool for opening my mail and cutting open boxes. At the same time, this is something that I can use for defensive purposes. This is uh, my normal carry, but it is a little bit bigger than what I want when I'm doing, uh, when I'm out running or walking or something along those lines. So I have this one, which is a Spyderco Delica that's been modified by 5x5 Combat Solutions and, uh, and Michael Janich. And it's just, uh, it's got a, more of a clip on the blade here, which reduces the length a little bit for legality purposes, and uh, it's, it looks good too. But same thing, just easily deployable with one hand. And this is my, my lighter weight option when I'm in running shorts, that kind of thing. So good solid blade. And then finally, I've got this one, which is also by 5x5 Combat Solutions, modified by Michael Janich. And this one, uh, the clip here, has the, the benefit of reducing the blade to under 2.5 inches, which is the limit for several jurisdictions. And uh, this gives you something that you can still carry in those jurisdictions. So this is my, my non-permissive environment blade, if you will. And it's been further modified by a deep carry clip back here. So you see this rides very, very low in the pocket as opposed to the standard clip, which you get more of the, uh, the tip of the knife sticking out of your pocket. In this case, with the deep carry clip, it rides almost completely in the pocket and uh, just has better concealment, again, for those non-permissive environments. That's the term that we use, non-permissive environments. It sounds good. Um, going over into the fixed blade knives, a couple of different ones that I carried. I used to carry this one actually on my body armor, on my center line, and this was during uh, entries and whatnot, this was the weapon that I went to if the rifle got entangled. And uh, I'd go through a room, someone grabbed the muzzle, this is what would come out. And this one uh, obviously has a tremendous psychological impact because it is a big, big blade. And I wore it right here center line behind the magazines uh, on my, my plate carrier. And we'll talk about that in a second. These two are from a company called Tactical Trailer Park. And uh, this is one that's more for field use because this one is rather large. This is a concealed carry version. And one thing that I really like about these, and I'm going to talk about, is the fact that they have the ring back here. The ring does a couple of things. One, it gives you an index point when you draw the knife, and it makes sure that you've got a good solid grip here. This is not going to come loose. Even if your arm gets hit and your hand comes open, you've got positive control of the knife. Plus, if you do create space and decide to go for your firearm, I can still draw and I can still shoot while retaining the knife. A little bit easier than I can with an ordinary type of handle like this. So I'm very partial to the, uh, the ring uh, setup on my fixed blades, even on some of my folders as well. Uh, the downside is your finger can get trapped and you could break a finger, but um, given the, the pros and cons, I still like this option. It does really increase your control. Most of the, the finger, the ring here will have some sort of nub like this that you can use for striking as well. You've got that on the Gitfo from American Kami. Uh, this one is a Topps Cut 4.0. This does not have any kind of striking point, but the, uh, they're still the same principle. When we talk about sheaths, sheaths are very important. Sheaths are the holster for your knife. And uh, for your, your, your folding blades, typically it's gonna be a clip that's gonna go in your pocket, although there, there are some sheath options available for your folding blades as well. Uh, that will automatically deploy the blade as you draw the knife out of the sheath. But for the most part, those are gonna be just clipped into your pocket or clipped onto your gear the sheaths are going to be for your fixed blades. And so there are a couple of different ones we can look at here. The, this one is for the Hazatu. This is the Columbia River knife and tool that I talked about, Hazatu. And this one goes like this. And you'll see I've got Velcro here, a little strip of Velcro, and there's a piece underneath the, uh, the belt loop here. Normally the belt loop's not on there. But uh, this was the way I secured it inside my plate carrier. So it went down in the kangaroo pouch behind my AR magazines and just sat just like that right there. And it was, it was because of the black handle against the black plate carrier, it concealed very well. No one even knew it was there. But uh, it kept its center line, kept it secure, and it was very quick for me to access with either hand, but primarily with my support hand. You also can uh, do inside the waistband. So these are both set up for inside the waistband. This has got a uh, Raven concealment clip that does allow you to tuck it if you wanted to, but um, this is for this one. And tucks in very nicely. 
Design is going to be important because a lot of times the factory sheaths kind of mirror the, um, the uh, profile of the blade. And so you get a sharp point down here, which can dig into your hip. So when I had these made from uh, my buddy over at T5 Custom Kydex, I specifically wanted him to round those edges so that there wasn't any kind of poking point uh, that was going to dig into my hip when I was carrying this inside the waistband. So that is something to think about. That's a consideration. You can also get sheaths that are set up for a horizontal carry on the belt. And it's got these two loops, pull the dot type loops that just wrap over and uh, this rides horizontal in the kidney position or wherever you wanted to put it. So as far as placement of the, the blade, the two spots that I always used were um, when I was carrying on the point of my hip in a duty type configuration, even in plain clothes, with my duty setup, I wore a, uh, a, a Safarlan ALS on the point of my hip. Um, I would carry the blade somewhere on center line. That way I could get to it with either hand and it was very accessible. Even if I got pinned in, I could get my hand down and access the knife. And both when um, I was carrying the Gitfo, this is the American Kami Gitfo, I would carry this right down in the inside the waistband at center line so that I could get to it easily. And when I was carrying the Hizatu um, up here in the plate carrier. But the idea is that I could access it with either hand. The way that I look at this, like I said, it's going to deal with uh, I'm tangled up, I'm fighting for my weapon, my, my long gun is entangled, so I want my support hand to be have primary access, to be, the, be the, the hand that can definitely get a hold of the knife, because that might be the all that I've got available since this hand, my shooting hand, remember I'm a lefty, my shooting hand is tied up on the, uh, the gun itself. So now that I carry appendix most of the time, what I do is I run the blade on my support side, somewhere in, in front of the point of the hip. Again, I can still get to it with my shooting hand if the situation requires it, but primarily it's set up so that I can access it with my support hand if I'm fighting, if I'm holding onto my gun, something along those lines. So moving on, um, the last thing we're gonna talk about uh, is training and something that you can get are training blades. So this is um, an Azatu, but this is the trainer. So it's, this one's actually aluminum, dull edge. There's no sharp cutting point or anything. You can get them for your folders too. So this is a Kershaw Emerson CQC7. This is the live blade version. And then we've got our training version as well for when we want to practice this stuff and not risk cutting ourselves or our partner. Different trainers that I've got here as well. This is a training version actually that I made of a Boker Gitfo. Uh, this is the production version from Boker, uh, Boker of the custom version from American Kami. And this one I had um, the edge ground off and the tip removed so that I could use this as a trainer. When it comes to using edge weapons, if you want to be really proficient, I've talked about this from a gross motor type of perspective. And you can, you can learn those skills fairly quickly using the knife just as a gross motor creating distance type of thing fairly quickly, fairly easily. You do have to put some thought into it, plan out how you're going to use it, define the mission, all the things we've talked about in previous videos. If you want to be really, really good uh, with an edged weapon, though, it is going to require a lot of training, probably more training that, uh, than would be required to have commensurate skill with a firearm, handgun, or a rifle. Uh, the martial arts, uh, various martial arts involve edged weapons. There are combative schools that deal with edged weapons, a bunch of different options. But if you want to be good at these, you do need to seek out training. And uh, don't just think, because I've got the knife, I'm good to go. I know what to do. So, as always, if you have any questions at all about anything that I didn't talk about or anything that I did talk about, leave us a comment, leave us a question below. Give us a like, give us a share. Y'all stay safe.